I didn't just get here to successful. I opened myself up to learn from others. Here at Easy Federal Resumes and more, I'm challenging you to do the same. Wisdom is the ability to know what to do with knowledge. Success is something that you attract by the person that you become. It's called the law of attraction. If you're starving your thinking by being closed-minded, you'll attract small-minded thoughts and people who will bring you small opportunities. You won't be able to get the big opportunities because you will only be attracting small ones. Let's learn how to write a successful federal resume. You're here now at my channel to watch these videos. The goal is not to get to know me, it's to learn what I've been successful at, helping people with their federal resume. Getting to know me is an effect of watching my videos, which I very much thank you. I also hope to shed some light in some areas that you may have been closed-minded about or in the dark. Let me give you this analogy. You can have as many 20 watt bulbs as money can buy, but you're still going to be in a dim room. You can illuminate a situation better when you have a 100 watt bulb. You don't even realize how dim the room is until somebody brings in a lamp, plugs it in, and turns it on with their 100 watt lamp. This channel was created to shine on what I believe are overlooked opportunities by everyday people who simply don't know what the success they could achieve by working for the federal government. The first light I want to turn on for you today is what you're focusing on, a tangible item you're calling federal resume. I'm telling you, not only because I've been you, your federal resume is generated from completing in totality your profile on usajobs.gov and by entering all the information into it. I've, I've never, never uploaded, uploaded a, resume a resume because it's counterproductive. What you need is to focus on one, filling out all the information completely, providing every detail to every expectation. Two, capitalizing on every advantage, preference available to you. Are you a veteran? Are you disabled? Are you a minority? Are you the spouse of a veteran, etc.? I cover so many. And three, writing in a tone that speaks not only to what you've done, but what you can do, knowledge, skills, and abilities. Now, I heard a story that I'll share. A guy who was a millionaire walked up to a billionaire, this is not a joke, it's just a story, and asked him what one attribute contributed to the, your success. The billionaire said, Tell me something about your friends, curiously. The millionaire said, well, my friends are all millionaires too. The billionaire said, I see, that's your problem right now. He said, you don't have any billionaire friends. He went on to say, you'll never become what you don't surround yourself with. The same thing is the case with a room full of 20 watt bulbs. If you can't see what you're missing, you can't learn. My friends, knowledge is light, and I'm shining a light through my channel. No course to sign up for, no book to buy, absolutely free. Now, I don't know you, but I do know that 90% of the jobs that I apply for, I am found as highly qualified because there is no way that a one-page resume is able to contain the wealth of knowledge, skills, and abilities that I've amassed or you've amassed in the course of a position. I want to give you an example of a person who has worked at three different fast food restaurants over the course of the last three years, just to keep it simple. One year at Wendy's as a cook, another year at McDonald's as a cook, and yet another at Hardee's as a cook. Simple. Now we already know, no matter how mundane the job is, if you worked it within that 10 year span, you must list it. Every one of my security clearance videos drives that fact home to you. Check them out. Don't skip them because you think that you're not applying for a job with a security clearance. 
All roads lead to assessing your suitability for federal government work. And all roads lead to, I'm going to let you find out, go watch it. Beginning with Wendy's as a cook, let's go back to the analogy. That person has to work with food safety, sanitation, carrying food supplies, handling utensils, and storage and work areas to assess the equipment for functionality. Now we're at McDonald's, same guy, same cook title. The emphasis here will be on productivity, maintaining quality control, assembling meal trays according to orders placed, clean food preparation areas, facility and equipment storage. So now our guy's over at Hardee's for this next year. This time he'll be working on customer service, taking orders, training new staff, being a part of a team, performing internal and external maintenance, troubleshooting, and customer complaints. Now you might say, Lisa, this applicant is still only qualified to be a cook no matter how you write it. Or you might say, this is an exaggeration, abomination. It's not. No matter the level of film or sound quality, the time is now for you to stay put and listen all the way to the end. I'm going to tell you why because it's the smartest thing to do and it's how you learn. Let me tell you, I've worked at McDonald's and it's not. I titled the worker as a cook, but he or she also is a food prep, a closer, a trainer, and likely in line if she desires, or he, to be an assistant manager or a cashier after working for three years. When you work in fast food, you maintain a number of hats. Think big, not small. Again, Think big, not small. This applicant is well qualified to work at the VA as a dietitian assistant, within a cafeteria as a manager, at the commissary, or at a basic exchange. That example, smart people, is the difference between your LinkedIn one-page or two-page resume and completing the 5,000 character text that you can type into your job description. Now this, you've seen. It's my federal resume. Can you see how tiny? that type is probably if I took it to 12 point font um, Roman oh my goodness these two paragraphs alone would easily be three or four pages when you're entering your job description on USA jobs it's asking you for your availability your job type your salary your hours worked per week the languages that you speak affiliations the name of your supervisor and his or her phone number where on your one page nicely bulleted resume can you put that information and most importantly where do you have the space to write your duties accomplishments and related skills related skills the emphasis of the federal government is clearly not on the compactness of your resume but to expand upon your knowledge skills and abilities does each one of the fast food cooks have the ability to run a register? Can each one serve customers? Yes, ma'am. Those are all related to their position. If you ever feel like you're stuck in a certain position in life, here's the issue. You're really not stuck. You're just committed to a certain pattern of thought that helped you in the past that's not helping you now. Those behaviors helped you in the past and they've stagnated you now. They're harmful because you've assumed that because you've worked at a fast food restaurant or wherever your scenario is, all that you're qualified for is to be a cook or that it's an embarrassment to have worked at a fast food restaurant. Each one of those fast food restaurant positions is worth 5,000 characters, 5, 10, 15, 15,000 in total of knowledge, skills, and ability. That's not an embarrassment. What the greater embarrassment would be is if you worked at those three places within 10 years and you didn't list it and being called out for being deceptive. Capitalize, smart people, on your experiences and stop applying the same old formula to a whole nother level of job seeking. This is the federal government. So you're not going to create a one or two page resume and upload it. You're going to just Follow my instructions, watch the videos, and do as I say, and as I've done. Listen to me. I want you to be smart people. The wise become wise because of the wise. Now, 
I had to put that in writing for you so that you could see it and not get it twisted. The whys become wise because of their whys. You understand the why, it shifts you from another level from what the front line worker knows to what the owner knows. And here's my next tip as your personal coach. The line worker, manager, and supervisor know what to do at their level. But the owner developed the business and she understands the whole system and why it began. In order to capitalize on your knowledge, skills, and abilities, you have to understand why each level does what they do. The cook must cook the meat at a designated temperature because it's a food safety requirement. If a customer gets food poisoning because of the improperly handled food, the owner is at risk for a lawsuit, much less the customer getting sick. If, the, if that owner is not able to mitigate his risk by properly training his staff and ensuring adequate supervision, he is likely to lose profits and consequently lose his business and you your job. There are the whys and at what point is the cook not directly intertwined with those responsibilities? When creating your USA Jobs Profile Smart People, the federal resume is always there. Always follow the money. The wise question is why? Whatever task you do at your job, ask yourself why and do it from a higher level of thought at the beginning of the task. And what will the result be? Those skills you play a part in, you need to write down. Capture those keywords and put it in your job description. That way you'll never run out of characters, data, words, keywords that you have to enter. Last tip, the bar is being raised every day. Yesterday's best is today's normal and today's normal is tomorrow's subpar. Create your own knowledge and experience. There you have it. The light is on. Step into it and I'll see you next time.